Now let's look at some of the Scala language features. Each one of these features is a strong testament of Scala's popularity and interest. Once you invest more time learning Scala, you would appreciate how much thought has been put into designing this language. Scala is a blend of object-oriented and functional programming language. That means, as a programmer, you may already have experience working with object-oriented model. So you could pretty much come on day one and start writing code in Scala while learning the functional programming. This lowers down the barrier, in my humble opinion, to a large extent. However, even though you can continue to write object-oriented code, I would strongly encourage you to learn the functional programming paradigms, since it opens up a whole new world of programming. Scala offers REPL mode, which we will cover later in this course. This mode offers to try out Scala programs on the command line. With this approach, you can learn and get feedback faster. This short feedback loop cycle is so valuable because you do not need to commit to boilerplate code and project structure to validate your ideas. Most Scala engineers first try out smaller ideas before making them part of a bigger project lifecycle. Scala runs on Java Virtual Machine. What does it mean? It means that if you're coming from Java background, you can start integrating Scala code into your own projects. This is great because the entire way you build and deploy your projects will not be affected drastically. You will not have to make huge changes to your software development and delivery lifecycle and yet be able to use Scala. As programmers, we all have chased bugs when the variable changes their values or when the objects have been modified after they have been created. We hate them, right? This is because such sneaky bugs do not help us learn in comparison to the time we spend finding them. Scala as language favors and promotes immutability. This concept is not new and not exclusive to Scala or functional programming, yet many languages do not promote them well enough. We will learn in this course about immutability, so be sure to check out the later modules. In programming, we have to deal with our problem domain and create a solution space for the problem. Once designed and deployed, it is the data that flows through the system. So effectively, we need a support to work with our data. Scala has a rich collections framework with many methods on collections available so that we don't have to write them. It is even more fantastic to see that since Scala embraces functional programming principles, you could combine the methods in the collections library to create new functions if your problem needs that combination. Once you understand the principles behind the Scala collection framework, you will be a problem solving powerhouse. You could start looking at the problems into smaller functions and be able to pick the right collection methods to solve them. Now, if you have worked with languages such as Java, you would immediately know how difficult it is to express a concurrent computation. You need to deal with threads, locks, and interruption. You also need a mechanism to communicate with other threads so that they are not waiting infinitely. You as developer are also 100% responsible to guard the state of your object using synchronization techniques. Overall, it is no fun. You could literally spend days and weeks in plumbing such computation and still not guarantee that anything would work. Worse, you are so much involved into this plumbing that your focus is away from the business problem you were solving. Does any one of these connect with you? This is because Java was not built with keeping concurrency as a major support. The world has moved on where even our small mobile phones contain multiple processors. As a developer, you must leverage these computing resources to make efficient programs. Scala has an excellent concurrency support. Instead of plumbing the entire concurrent computation, you just declare that the computation is asynchronous and not wait for the computation to complete. Behind the scenes, the asynchronous code runs concurrently on multiple threads and once the result is ready, it could be used further. Best of all, the Scala type system gives a type to such a computation so that it is easier to read and use it further in our programs. Scala has a mature ecosystem when it comes to testing. The community itself is passionate about test-driven development and validating the code using automated tests. You would find testing libraries such as the Scala test offering different style of writing tests, matching individuals or teams need. It is a lot easier to test concurrent applications in Scala than in other languages. You could additionally define the invariants in your code and let Scala generate the tests and execute them using property-based testing. Scala at start may scare you because you may find it hard to read. But if you stick around for a while and understand the necessary concepts, I bet you would love how expressive the language is. You could save a ton of time expressing your computation with very few lines of code than writing a whole page to do a very little. Consider its comparison with the closely related language Java. Let's say we have a domain object representing a bank account. Do you know how many lines of code at minimum we need to represent the account class in Java? 
Consider this implementation including only the fields declaration, public getters and setters, and no business logic. Any guesses? It would take approximately 47 lines to achieve this. Now, do you want to guess how many lines it would take to represent the same object in Scala? Yes, that's right, just one line. Using case classes in Scala, you could write this entire thing in one line. You would get not just the getters, but also the ability to clone and perform the pattern matching on the object by using case classes. That's exciting, isn't it? Isn't that something that you want to learn? Think how much productivity gains you could get once you start working with Scala.